everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Inca Skull Surgeons Apparently, the ancient Inca doctors of Peru had unparalleled medical knowledge, and scientists don't know where they got it from. All we know is that there were Inca skull surgeons able to treat head injuries with shocking precision. Archaeological evidence from Peru shows complex surgeries being undertaken over 1,000 years ago. In particular, the ancient surgeons performed a special operation called trepanation. Trepanation is still performed today, although it's done with more sophistication now than it was 1,000 years ago. When somebody suffers a severe head trauma, fluid sometimes builds in the brain. To relieve the pressure and save the patient from potential death and extreme agony, the pressure has to be relieved. To do this, a hole is drilled in the skull. But it's not as easy as just drilling into somebody's head with an electric drill. It's extremely complex and dangerous, and is something only practiced by skilled surgeons. Somehow, in the Inca capital of Cusco around 1000 AD, doctors had already begun perfecting this surgical technique. But it took a while to get everything just right. Some of the oldest skulls that had the operation performed on them show no evidence of healing, meaning they likely died as a result. But then, starting around 600 years ago, evidence shows the survival rate hit 90%. The Inca figured out how to prevent infection and how to properly perform what essentially was brain surgery. Valerie Andrushko from Southern Connecticut State University says the Inca developed a detailed knowledge of cranial anatomy and that they were skilled surgeons. But what kind of technology was available to them that they were able to perform surgeries? Operations were most likely assisted by medicinal plants used for anesthesia and antibiotics. We don't know what plants exactly, but some combination of wild plant and beer was likely used to alleviate pain. Then, natural antiseptics were implemented to avoid infection following surgery. Pretty advanced, huh? Number 9. Aeolipile The Aeolipile, also known as the Hero's Engine, was a radial steam turbine created by an Egyptian mathematician named the Hero of Alexandria. He lived in the 1st century AD and is credited with a lot of wacky inventions, including the world's first coin-operated vending machine. Here's how the steam engine worked. It consisted of a mounted hollow sphere with two tubes fixed to its center, pointed in opposite directions. The sphere was designed to rotate on its axis. When the spherical vessel became pressurized with steam, steam gas would shoot out of its nozzles and cause it to spin. It's the same idea as a rocket being propelled using Newton's laws of motion. The steam engine worked because the spherical vessel was connected to a pair of hollow straws, which themselves were fixed to a bowl of water. A fire was lit underneath the water, and as the water boiled, steam was fed through the tubes into the sphere. This would have been an extremely impressive display for people living 2,000 years ago. However, despite the aeolipile being the first recorded steam engine, it was never a practical source of power. Number 8. Roman Self-Healing Concrete Roman concrete was one of the most impressive creations of the Roman Empire. The Romans took architecture and engineering to the next level. They built an extensive network of roads and created massive aqueducts to bring water to civilization. They even made stadiums to entertain the masses. All of these amazing building projects were a success thanks to Roman ingenuity, particularly their concrete. The Romans used such strong concrete that it has lasted over 2,000 years in many places. To understand what made it so special, researchers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology recently conducted a new study. They analyzed samples of Roman concrete in an attempt to identify all the ingredients they used. What the scientists learned was that Romans made incredibly strong mortar using hydrated lime and volcanic ash. But the volcanic ash they added to the concrete was very specific, found only after volcanic eruptions near the city of Pozzuoli. This meant the volcanic ash needed to make the best concrete in the world wasn't exactly limitless. But there was something else the Romans did that made their concrete able to repair itself. Researchers identified a substance known as quicklime, made from heating chunks of hardened limestone. Adding quicklime allowed Roman concrete to heal when cracked. 
Whenever a structure was damaged, the crumbling lime clasts would chemically react with rainwater seeping through the concrete by hardening into a calcium-saturated solution. It would work to fill small cracks in the concrete, making slightly damaged structures even stronger. Number 7. The Stone Marvels of Hampi During the 14th century, Hampi was the capital of the mighty Vijayanagara Empire. Persian and European travelers wrote that Hampi was a wealthy city bustling with life, filled with temples, and rich in international trade markets. By the year 1500, Hampi was the second largest medieval city in the world following Beijing. Researchers say it was probably the richest city in India at that time. Yet today, the whole place is ruined. The capital was conquered by the Muslim sultanates in 1565, who pillaged and destroyed everything they could. And even after all that, there are still over 1,600 surviving remains spread over 16 square miles, which is almost unprecedented for a medieval city. One of the most impressive features of Hampi is its stone doors. The royal enclosure, which once housed the royal family, was guarded by huge swinging doors. Each door was intricately carved, sculpted from a solid boulder. The doors also had bolt and pivot shafts, like some modern doors have today. The pivot doors were much more complicated to make than ordinary hinged doors. They stood on huge pivots that swiveled inside holes, allowing the gates to easily be opened. It might seem simple, but it was a brilliant use of engineering skills 500 years ago. In the end, the impressive doors didn't help much when the city was overrun and destroyed. Number 6. The Nimrud Lens The 3,000-year-old Nimrud Lens is an ancient piece of rock crystal that was found at the Assyrian Palace of Nimrud in 1850. And for over a century, historians and scientists have been fighting over its intended use. Some say it's nothing but a random object found in the debris of an ancient city, while other experts say it was used as the lens of a telescope. If true, the mysterious artifact may have been part of the first telescope ever made. It would also explain why the Assyrians had such uncanny knowledge of astronomy. But let's first discuss the specifics of the lens. It's made from natural rock crystal, and it's slightly oval in shape formed by human hands. It has a focal point of about 4.33 inches, with a focal length of 4.72 inches. These dimensions make it roughly the same as an average magnifying glass. However, if combined with another lens of similar values, it would achieve significant magnification. If there were two lenses like this paired in a telescope, they would give a shockingly detailed view of cosmic objects. The only issue is that scientists can't agree on this. The British Museum admits the rock crystal was carefully ground and polished and that it has optical properties. However, individual scientists are at odds. Some say it was used to start fires by concentrating sunlight. Others, like Italian scientist Giovanni Pettinato from the University of Rome, say it was definitely part of a telescope. Giovanni proposed that the Assyrians use the Nimrud lens to gaze at the planets of the Milky Way. What do you think the lens was really used for? Let me know in the comments! And now for number 5. But first, it's shoutout time! I want to give a big thank you to Karina Monje and A.S. Quinn for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about advanced ancient technology. Number 5. The Syracusea the Syracusea is believed to have been the largest transport ship of antiquity. It was such a huge vessel that it couldn't even fit in the port of Sicily after it was built in 240 BC. According to legends, the Syracusea was designed and constructed by famous architect Archimedes. He was a great mathematician, physicist, and inventor. And he was even an astronomer. So it's no surprise that Archimedes would be so bold as to design the largest ship ever made. Based on a description from ancient historian Moschiana of Phasilis, the boat could carry almost 2,000 passengers and 1,800 tons of cargo. It could also hold a catapult and 200 soldiers for defense. However, the ship only sailed once. It made a brief voyage from Syracuse to Alexandria, where Ptolemy III, pharaoh of Egypt, received it as a personal gift. What happened to the ship next is unknown. 
Most historians agree it was way too big to be of any use, and so it likely fell into disrepair while sitting in the harbor of Alexandria. But the technology used in its creation is still impressive. In an effort to prevent the hull from being covered in microorganisms like algae and plants, it was allegedly coated with horsehair and pitch. Researchers believe this impressive ship is the first true example of anti-fouling technology, which basically means that it used stuff to keep the outside of the ship as clean as possible, so things like slime, barnacles, and other creatures that love to grow under boats don't slow it down or eat it away. Now, if you have a boat, you can just buy anti-fouling paint. But 2,300 years ago, not so much. Number 4. The Wishing Well In the Bavarian town of Germering, archaeologists found the remains of a Bronze Age well filled with mysterious ritual deposits. It's about 16 feet deep, and the wooden walls near its bottom were still found to be damp from the accumulation of groundwater. Inside the well, archaeologists discovered pieces of jewelry and ceramic vessels, as well as the remains of other objects that were likely thrown into the well on purpose. The experts are saying this could be the oldest example of a wishing well ever found at 3,000 years old. Just like how people throw coins into wells and fountains today hoping for a bit of luck, so too did ancient people living in northern Germany. The well's first and foremost function was likely to supply water to the residents of the small settlement. But at some point, people began using the well to make wishes. The items found at the bottom of the well were extremely expensive, artifacts that might have been considered luxury items in 1800 BC, such as clay vessels and jewelry. Many of them seem to have been carefully lowered into the water, not simply tossed in. This suggests a great deal of care was made when giving offerings to the well. The people here may have worshipped some mysterious god or gods, or they might have thought discarding their precious belongings would somehow bring them fortune. What would you throw into a well for good luck? Let me know in the comments below! Number 3. The Tunnel of King Hezekiah The Assyrian Empire was on a rampage 2,600 years ago. They were the largest kingdom that had ever existed at that time, and were busy conquering territory after territory. They dominated the kingdom of Judah, forcing the Judean king Hezekiah to humble himself before the mighty Assyrians. According to legends, the king was forced to remove the golden doors from the holy temple and ship them to Assyria as tribute. But the Assyrians still weren't satisfied. So they sent an estimated 200,000 soldiers to the outskirts of Jerusalem, where King Sennacherib threatened to destroy the Judeans forever. This is a prominent story in the Bible, but it's also something that happened in real history. The issue is that our scientists can't always separate fact from fiction. In the Bible, the Assyrian army died overnight before reaching Jerusalem because of God's divine intervention. In reality, King Hezekiah got lucky when the Assyrians became distracted by another conflict with the city of Libna. Regardless of which story you believe, one fact remains the same. King Hezekiah prepared for war. Anticipating an attack, he fortified the walls of Jerusalem and embarked upon one of the most technologically complex operations in history, at least in ancient history. He rerouted the water source from outside the city to inside the city, thereby ensuring his people would have access to fresh water if there was a siege. He did this by digging a tunnel, and it can still be seen today in the city of David, although it's mostly collapsed and in ruins. Number 2. Greek Lifting Technology Long before modern cranes were invented, the Greeks figured out how to lift things of extreme weight. Researchers believe that around the 6th century BC, the Greeks came up with an ingenious way to more easily build grand structures out of stone. This invention came before the use of primitive cranes, which were invented around the 7th century BC using winches and solid framework. Architectural historian Alessandro Piratini says the Greeks were the first civilization to discover crane technology. But before that, they came up with a different way to lift stones. The Greeks used a system of levers and ropes to lift and lower single blocks during construction. We learned about this recently thanks to evidence at the ancient city of Corinth. Between 700 BC and 650 BC, 
Massive blocks weighing over 800 pounds were used to construct temples here. These blocks had weird twin grooves along their bottoms, which were likely carved so they could be lifted by a special machine that would then move them into place. It was done with a simple system of ropes and rollers. The grooves made the stones easy to lift, and even easier to roll into place next to other stones. The ropes could then be extracted from beneath the blocks without needing to lift anything because of these ingenious grooves. Number 1. The Menahune Ditch In the town of Waimea, Kauai, there is a small ditch on the side of a road that almost looks like nothing. And yet, this small, seemingly unimportant ditch holds an ancient secret. The waterway was engineered by an ancient civilization in such a way that modern archaeologists are still puzzled by it. The ditch used to be part of an aqueduct. When British navigator George Vancouver visited the site in 1793, he said the aqueduct was over 20 feet tall and that the top of it was used as a walkway. In 1924, modern construction in Hawaii obliterated almost all of the ancient structure. This is a shame because now that researchers are interested, it's almost all gone. All that remains is the Menahune Ditch, which likely predates the 14th century migration of Tahitians to the island. Then again, the ditch may be a lot older than that. Some experts say it could have been built by settlers who arrived on the island in the 13th century. Others say it's thousands of years older, built by the mysterious Menehune. The Menehune are said to be a group of tiny men and women who occupied the Hawaiian Islands centuries before foreigners arrived. They were exceptionally short, kind of like mythical dwarves, but they were also skilled engineers. Some believe the ditch is all that remains of an extremely complex aqueduct system that likely supplied the Menehune cities, all of which are now destroyed with fresh water. Thanks for watching! Which of these examples of ancient technology do you think was the most impressive? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!